Hey buddies, Some Nuts Guy here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far and welcome back. In this video, we are going to be talking about the basics of Ars Nouveau and how to get started with that in terms of creating spells and the things that you'll need to get started, how to get those things. There's a lot to go through. If I were to cover like all the different spells and and all the basics and everything in one video, it would be 30 minutes long and I don't want that to be the case. So this guide specifically will be just covering the very basics on how to get started, what items you need to get started, a couple of tips on how to get those items, how the mechanics work in terms of unlocking glyphs and creating essences, which will all make sense shortly. Then I'm going to be doing separate guides on tier one, two, and three spells and what spells I use and then how to create those spells in the spell book for the best effects, what combinations of glyphs can create really useful spells and how to combine them in a way that makes them most useful. If that makes sense. So this is just going to be the basics and then I'll be releasing further guides to cover specific spells and through the different tiers of spells, which you'll be able to unlock throughout your gameplay. All right, let's go. So you will need some things to get started. To get started, you'll need a scribes table, which is where you unlock glyphs, which are the things that you then create spells with. You'll need an imbuement chamber uh, to get source gems. You'll need source gems. Easiest way to get source gems is to get blocks of amethyst. So you'll need to go mining, find yourself a, a geode and get as many blocks of amethyst as you can. A couple of st stacks of blocks of amethyst and you can be good to go because you can turn blocks of amethyst into source gem blocks and then you can turn source gem blocks into source gems. Now you can also get source gems by turning uh, just regular uh, lapis or amethyst into source gems but the easiest way is just get the amethyst blocks of amethyst and turn those into blocks of source gems to get your source gems you'll also need some archwood logs now to do everything in ours you'll need uh one of each type of the archwood log there are four types of archwood log there's the blue green red and the purple and you will need the various log types for various things throughout the process but to get started you'll need at least one type because the scribes table will require one of the archwood logs to get started to create the scribes table which is where you create the glyphs to be able to create your spells you'll need the imbuement chamber to turn your blocks of amethyst into source gems and you'll also need the imbuement chamber to gain essences which will be required to create some of the glyphs so this is a fairly important you probably need two of these well probably want to have two of these just for optimization um what you're going to be doing is you're going to put your imbuement chamber down and this is crafted uh with some archwood planks and some gold put your imbuement chamber down and what i did is i just put a hopper on top and then you throw your blocks of amethyst in there and then they'll drop from the hopper in here you don't want to hopper it out because it'll just cycle through all of them none of them will turn into source gem blocks and after you see crafting progress four or five so once that gets to 100 that will turn into a source gem and then you just right click it pull that item out and then it'll autofill with the next one so that's how you get your source gem blocks moving swiftly on now of course to do spells you'll need a spell book and to craft your first spell book the novice spell book it's really simple it's just a book and one of each of the iron tools and a sword oh it doesn't have a hoe so not one of each but yeah this is how you make the spell book and this will allow you to access tier one spells now the major spell book is the tier two spell book you'll see that you'll need diamonds cords blaze rods obsidian that will allow you to unlock tier two spells and the archmage spell book which is uh, requiring some hi higher tier stuff will allow you to access tier three spells but we're getting ahead of ourselves let's go back to tier one just getting started so once you've crafted your novice spell book you can press n on it i believe by default as long as you have the spell book in your hand, you press N and it should open up the spell book. You can always go into uh, keybinds. If you ever want to check your keybinds for specific categories, you can click this category icon and type in ours as an example. And spell book open book can be rebound here. I use N. It might actually be different by default. I can't remember. So you might want to just double check the keybinds here. And you'll see that you start off with a few basic things. Now, essentially, there's a form an effect and a modifier i don't have any modifiers uh, unlocked as of yet this is just what you start with projectile will shoot a projectile self will cast that on yourself and touch will cast it when you touch something within a block's range basically you start off with the harm spell so 
how you create spells when you have glyphs unlocked very basically is you add the form because that's how the spell is going to be cast whether it's going to be cast on yourself or as a projectile as an example and then the effect and then there's also modifiers to effects but we'll get to that in a moment so this right here is a very basic spell that casts a projectile of harm harm just does a small amount of damage you can always hold shift to get further information a spell you start with damages the target maybe increased by amplify which is a modifier we'll talk about shortly so you'll collect, select your form, select your effect, then you'll name the spell. This will just be named Harm, and then you click Create, and you can see you've got 10 tabs of spells here. So we'll create that, and you can create 10 different spells. Now, when you're on your spell book, you can see in the bottom left, it has the mana bar, and it says number one, Harm. That means you've accessed number, spell number one. The default for changing spells is Z to go back and X to go forward. So X will take me to spell two, Z will take me to spell 10, as an example. You can also, if you wanted to go to controls, keybinds, category, Rs, you can do quick cast slots. So you can select keybinds specifically to cast a certain spell. So my button, my mouse button casts number 10 as an example. So if I had a spell number 10, pressing this mouse button, so even if I was on number one harm and I press that mouse button keybind, it'll cast the spell that's on spell slot number 10 here. Now harm is very basic. Oh, I've got it on peaceful lull. Harm is very basic. Wow, of course. Uh, oh, shit. Oh. Of course it spawned as a freaking champion, bro. What do you mean? All right, we'll pretend that just didn't just happen. We'll, we'll pretend that didn't just happen. Yep, yep. And why is it another champion? What the hell? And it's infested. Okay, so... If I've got, and I'm, I'm going to do this in creative now, um, everything should be the same. There shouldn't be any problems with doing it in creative, but so I've got my spell book in my hands. I've got my harm spell selected and I just right click and that will cast the projectile. So this is projectile harm. I cast this with right click and it'll just, uh, yeah, it'll do that spell. Simple. Obviously if, if the spell was on number 10 and I press my key bind for it, it would cast the spell that I've key bound it to. Now, to unlock more glyphs and be able to create more interesting spells, you'll need to go to your scribes table and right-click with your book. If you right-click empty-handed, nothing will happen. If you right-click with your book, it'll open the glyphs menu. And this is all the glyphs that are available in the game, and you can break these down by tier. So I'm, I'm only tier one at the moment, so I can only access tier one spells, so I might as well break it down by tier. You can also search up here if I wanted to search, say, for example, Amplify. Amplifier is a modifier. Amplify is a modifier that you'll use a lot of the time basically just amplifies the effect of spells surprise surprise so we're going to select this one and we're going to click select and then it'll show you uh, have little floating icons for what you need to add to the table to unlock that glyph so if i then take a diamond pickaxe and i just throw it on the floor the table will consume that and create the glyph for us. Just takes a couple of seconds here. The glyph will pop out. Now I've got the glyph on my inventory and I can right click it. I'm in creative so it didn't consume it. But if you're in survival, it will consume the glyph. And then you then press N on your book. And you can see that that... Oh, they're called augments, not modifiers. That augment has been added. So now I can increase the um, amplify of the harm spell as an example. Things can usually only be amplified or augmented or amplified up to a certain amount by amplify and it will it won't allow you to amplify it further now amplify will increase the mana cost and the effect so if you amplify it too much it might be too expensive in mana especially if you're just getting started with spells so this increases the effect but it also increases the mana cost if you have a chest nest next to your inscription, uh, your scribe's table, in fact, it's got a decent-ish radius, a few few blocks out of the scribe's table. Basically, if you have a chest within range of the scribe's table, it will take items out of the chest to complete glyphs when you select new glyphs to unlock. Now, certain glyphs will require essences to unlock. As you can see, this leap spell, which is a very useful spell for traveling around, as it essentially launches you in the direction you're pointing, allowing you to travel much faster. And then that combined with something like bounce as an effect, which allows you to not take fall damage and instead bounce, or slow fall, which is a tier two spell you want to be able to unlock until a little bit later. Combined, leap combined with other things will allow you to travel much faster but it requires an essence to create. So how do we create essences? So air essence is the one that you need for bounce. Various spells will require different types of essences. 
air essence is used in quite a few spells so you'll need several of these to unlock a bunch of different stuff as you can see the re recipe is a feather a wilden wing and an arrow as well as a source gem to create an air essence how you do this is with the arcane pedestals and an imbuement chamber arcane pedestals are very simple to make and the imbuement chamber again is just the gold with the archwood planks so how you use this is kind of like a crafting grid and say you've got your wilden wing feather and your arrow here you're just going to pop these in here like so and then you're going to get your source gem and then pop it in here and this source gem is going to turn into the air essence these items are not consumed so you can then create as many air essences as you want. The only thing that gets consumed is the source gem. So once this has gotten to crafting progress 100, it'll visually turn into the air essence. You can just right click to pull it out. And then you can just pop in another source gem to start creating another one. As a side note, at some point along the way, you might want to create rings of discount or other Ars Nouveau accessories, which can be put in the uh, on the left side here. You can't see it when I'm in creative. So we'll pop into survival really quickly and you click this icon and you've got all these like necklace head ring slots you can put rings of discount in these ring slots and they reduce the cost of spells there's also necklaces of discount or mana regen but those will be requiring a eight eight um arcane pedestals to craft and they'll be crafted in an enchanting apparatus so this is kind of a side note not necessarily relevant to do with spells but relevant to what we were just talking about with regards to the pedestals so what you can do is you can actually craft this, um, and this is what I did. So this will be your eight crafting grid to make the rings of discount as an example. So you'd put your eight pedestals around your enchanting apparatus in the middle. And then when you wanted to create your uh, ring of discount, you'd basically fill the outside with these items. The ender pearls, the diamonds, and the source gems would go around the eight block in, uh, crafting grid. And then your ring of potential would go in the middle here the ring of potential would be turned into the ring of lesser discount so you can have it so the imbuement chamber is on the left and then using these three and then your enchanting apparatus is in the middle of these eight and you can use this this is just a fairly optimized little setup for these two things which i was using through my playthrough all right back to creating spells so i'm now going to put the air essence and the three wilden ring three wilden wings in here and essentially when you're creating these essences a lot of them are going to be used to unlock spells so you can just put them in the chest near your scribes table and if you're ever trying to stockpile items to create glyphs like you know as an example you're going to want to unlock you know this one you might be able to you might put the abjuration essence and a milk bucket in here while you go out and get your other two milk buckets you can just pop them in here because then as soon as you select that spell to unlock you will it will pull those items out of the chest so you can just store any items that are going to be used for creating glyphs in a chest nearby so now if i select leap and i click select it'll pull those items out of the chest there you go you can see them getting pulled out visually which is quite nice and then it'll create the glyph for you Pick up the glyph, right click it to learn it, it will be consumed, and then you can go into your book and you've got the leap spell. Something to note is the more glyphs you have unlocked, each glyph that you unlock will actually increase your maximum mana slightly. So going through this and unlocking as many of these as you possibly can is a very good idea because each one unlocked will increase your maximum mana. There are uh, armor enchants that you can get to boost your mana as well as boost your mana regen. There are rings, like I showed you previously, that you can be used to reduce mana costs. There's a necklace here that can be uh, used to increase your overall mana or to increase your mana regen. So there's various different ways to boost your overall mana or to boost your mana regeneration. There's also certain foods that you can eat to boost your mana regen as well. Source berries are one that you can get very early on. It gives you just a few moments of mana regen. Something that I use a lot through my playthrough is the source berry roll. Very easy to craft. It gives you a decent food value for overall uh, food. 60% saturation, decent food diversity of 2.5. And this gives you a good amount of time of, it's like 30 seconds or something. I, can't, I don't know the exact time, but it's a decent amount of time of mana regen for just consuming this uh, berry roll. There's also potions of mana regen, etc, etc. So, I've pretty much covered the basics of getting started with Ars Nouveau spells, how to unlock glyphs, how to make spells, how to create the essences, how to get the source gems, 
I don't think there's anything I'm missing in terms of the basics on how to get started. And hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Hopefully that will help you on your journey getting started with Ars Nouveau. If you're interested to learn about what spells I used in sort of tier one and tier two and tier three throughout my journey, I'm going to be doing separate guides on that, showing you like the specific spells that I use, the specific combination of glyphs, how I use them, how I combine them for the best effect. And those guys will be coming out very shortly after this one. This will be like a little spell series for Ars Novo and for Dawncraft specifically. A lot of this is general for Ars Novo, but some of it will be specific to Dawncraft as that's the environment that I'm doing it in. And some things are locked for Dawncraft, like the break spell is locked, the mage block spell is locked. Um, but I'll be covering all those things in the future guides, which will be coming out very, very soon. Guys, if you enjoyed yourself, give the video a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, consider subscribing. And it's always great to see you in the comments. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care. Some nuts guy. Grab gaming by the nuts.